So the moral of the story, guys, is uh, don't use FedEx, use UPS. What's up, guys? We're back again today with another great video, and we're going to continue working on the Red Car Rosie. So one thing I want to go ahead and pop into is I actually had to rant. Um, as you can see, we've got more boxes. All of our parts are in except for the hood and then our um, support lock, which is actually coming from a Toyota dealership. Um, I think they're like in California or something. So it might be a little while before that comes in. So other than that, we have everything else for the car. Um, we're getting ready to go ahead and the next couple days, I'm probably gonna start doing daily uploads um, just for this week because we're going to go through the car quick. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take off the side skirts um, to get the fenders off. I'm pretty sure you have to take them off. I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, we're going to take the fenders off on both sides, the hood, and then of course all the front bracing. So as in this front reinforcement. And then we're also going to go ahead and probably just that front reinforcement for now. And then we're going to see how the radiator support is connected down there. So that way we can find the best way to have it painted and everything put back together. Um, the fastest we can get it back together, basically. So as you guys can see, like I said before, we're going to have to weld right over there in the corners for those. There's like a little spot weld. Um, so I'm just going to take the fenders off to make it. Um, easier for them to get to that and then obviously this is a key thing for you guys if you're going to rebuild a car or if you've wrecked your car the more work that you do um, the less uh, money and labor that you'll be paying the body shop to do for you like taking the fenders off stuff like that everybody can do that it's pretty self-explanatory and easy especially after this video because I'm going to show you guys exactly how to take both fenders off and everything like that um, but anyway, so what's actually going to happen is, is once we get the hood in and the the hood and that supporting lock in, we're going to have it all painted at the same time. Um, I believe this is how we're going to do it. So we're going to have it all painted at the same time. And then I'm going to bring everything back. We're going to go ahead and put in the um, new front reinforcement. We'll put in the new radiator support, the center frame. We'll leave the old pieces there, the one that's been on this side. And then on the driver's side, that one's okay. We'll bolt that driver's side one in, and then we're actually going to drive it down with the new front reinforcement um, and the new bracket that actually goes around the radiator on the car. And then that'll kind of help him line up the bracket that's bent right here, and then also line up the one on the driver's side that's actually okay, but we're going to replace it so it's all the same, all new parts. Um, so we're actually going to drive that down to him with the fenders off of it still, the hood off of it probably as well, and get... Um, that stuff welded on those two brackets that I showed you. I'll show you again right here We'll have that bracket right there welded on and that one over there And then we'll just go ahead and bolt it up to the center pieces right here to, So our radiators not flopping around then we will drive it back home and we'll go ahead and we'll put the new hinges on the new hood on um, and then we'll have to put on the foam piece that's right up there and we'll have to put on the front bumper and then the car will be done. So it's pretty um, pretty easy. The only thing that we might run into is of course, you guys know that you have to take it down to bare metal to weld. Um, and if we have those two brackets painted before, um, once he welds, he's gonna have to knock the paint off. We might have to have those resprayed again. Um, we'll kind of see what's gonna go on there or if you actually even really see it behind that fender. But obviously we'll put some type of protection on it. So it's not gonna be rusting or anything like that. Cause like I said, we want this car to be perfect for whoever decides to buy it. Um, but other than that guys, I'm pretty sure that's how we're gonna fix the car and how everything's gonna go back together. As of right now, we're actually gonna do some little odd and end things too. Um, the, the actual latch right here, it's kind of rusty and stuff. We're gonna clean it up really good, spray it back black, make it look nice and clean. Um, I'm actually think I'm going to go ahead and have these wheels, the two front ones fixed because they have a lot of curb rash on them. Um, and then we're actually going to um, paint the brake calipers red, the same color as the car, obviously. Um, that'll make it look more sporty and it'll look really good through those black wheels. So that was one thing that we wanted to do as well. Um, and you guys know I painted mine multiple times on my car. So that'll be pretty easy. 
Um, but anyway, guys, we'll go ahead and I'll show you kind of the parts we've got. So over here in this box, I've already showed you that. That is the RS grill. We have a new upper grill right here. Um, we have the foam um, reinforcement up here. And we actually have the plastic radiator panel that goes across um, that covers up the radiator and um, kind of the bumper like that gap in between that um, is in here in this ginormous box which is kind of crazy um, right here we actually have our headlights thanks again to lewis christmas um, i'll ask him if i can put his instagram here um, and anyway you guys can go follow him because he really helped out the build so show him some love and support i'll ask him make sure it's okay first before i put it there um, but anyway here's those brackets that have to be welded in we actually went ahead and just took those off um, we have our radiator reinforcement bracket right here. Um, this is the piece that I'm saying we'll have everything painted together. And then this is the piece that we'll go ahead and put on the car ourselves, hopefully, unless it's welded somewhere too. I don't think it is. I think all that is bolted together. Um, then, like I said, use the one that's good to brace it while we drive down there. Um, here's our new front reinforcement right here as well. Um, and that's pretty much it guys besides the hood and then of course i have like the clips and everything to put the grill and all that stuff on and then you know the gasket that runs across um the front bumper right here we have all that stuff as well um but anyway guys so let's go ahead and we will get into the video but first we'll see the uh rant that i went through i'm trying to find my parts um thanks to fedex uh sucking so We'll go ahead and we'll watch those clips right here and then we'll go ahead and take the fenders off. All right guys, so I don't really know where I'm going to stick this at in the video, but we actually got some more parts in today. We got the radiator diversion panel, or at least that's what it's called on the first gen. I think they call it like the radiator cover on the second gen. That's in stock. And we actually just got a, this was from UPS. They always find our house, no problem. And then we actually got a email saying that our headlights are here and that our um, radiator support is here i believe or it might be the front reinforcement um, one of those two is also here but fedex always says they leave it at our front door and it's never there so let's go find it all right guys so as you can see there's nothing on our front porch like normal we're actually getting tired of them taking it to the wrong places they've been doing this for the last couple of weeks they keep on putting it at our neighbor's rv so let's go up here and see if it's up here thank you fedex all right guys so we're at the end of the driveway and as you can see our mailbox is right there and here's our neighbor's house and this is just like a grass road that goes down to his rv and they think this is where we live not the paved road with the mailbox in front of it but a grass road that's gravel okay and then you can see down here and there's our packages down here next to an rv so in case you guys didn't know i do live in an rv now um so if you guys want to send me some stuff i'll give you the address to our new rv all right guys so here's our packages and i mean i know i live in tennessee and all but i mean hell most rednecks will at least put their address on the side of their rv if they're living in it there's no address on this it's in a cover next to a garage so there's no reason why they should be you know shipping this down here you guys have seen my house in the back of videos a full house with a paved driveway or a grass road that comes down here makes no sense to me all right guys so you seen how freaking crazy that was i mean i know i'm a redneck again like i said before in the video and i live in tennessee but come on now there's a house with a paved driveway there's a grass road that leads to a rv with no address, no telephone wires going to it, no electricity going to it. Hey, nobody's living there. I mean, you see that in Tennessee, but they at least like electricity. Come on now. But anyway, so let me know if you guys down in the comments have had any craziness going with getting packages either from UPS or FedEx. Um, I know that we all kind of go through this, but for some reason FedEx cannot find it. It would be different if UPS and um, USPS, like the mail, if they both had problems finding our house, but they find it fine. So I don't know what's wrong with FedEx, but the boys in purple and green, we need to figure out what's going on with them. But anyway, another thing that I was going to tell you guys about is a lot of guys have been asking about the RS front lip and if it was okay. Well, you can kind of see what we have left of the front bumper. The whole top was tore off and we actually have the bottom 
And during the, uh, you like Copart, they'll put the front bumper and stuff like that in the back if it's okay. Uh, we actually have the other headlight too. It's just smashed into a million pieces. Um, but they actually like folded this bumper up in the back of the car, which I, I appreciate it because of course I didn't have to rebuy these. But one thing that sucks is when they bend it up in there, as you can see, the lip is basically completely fine everywhere. Like the lip looks good and it's still got the OEM. Uh, they use like this red gasket. They actually put it on the back lip too. It's all good, looks great. And then you get right here and where they bent it up in this corner to fit it in the back bumper or in the back trunk, um, they uh, freaking cracked it down right here. So what we're gonna have to do is we're actually gonna have to plastic weld this. Uh, me and dad actually done it to another RS um, grill. If you guys notice on my black car, I have the RS, I think it's 3.0. It's like the blizzard pearl paint color. But anyway, um, I actually have a grill out of it, like the grill insert that makes the top grill a little smaller, more um, aggressive looking. Um, it was actually cracked as well, kind of like that. And we plastic welded it together. So I'll show you guys how to do that as well to save yourself some money because once you plastic weld it back, it's pretty much as good as new. Um, and then once they go ahead and they put that primer and that paint over it, it makes it more durable. Um, but anyway, like I have had zero problems out of that grill and it's great. So anyway, we'll go ahead and we'll see about fixing that too this week because obviously it's going to have to be repainted as well when we get the front bumper painted. Um, but other than that, guys, let's go ahead and we'll take these fenders off so this video don't run too long. Okay, guys, so upon further inspection on this, so instead of making this video about taking the fenders off, I'm just going to slowly start taking um the cowl off and some of this other stuff because one if you look underneath this gasket right here i won't pull it back right now but well here you can kind of see it there's actually a bolt right there that holds the fender on and then also we're going to have to have this cowl off anyway to take the hood off because the hinges are actually bent um, themselves so we're going to have to be able to get to those bolts back there and it'll be a pain in the butt without that off so first things first i'm going to show you guys how to take the cowl off and then depending on how you know how long that takes or whatever with this video we'll either shut down the video there and then we'll do the fenders and stuff tomorrow which will be tuesday because um, i'm trying to just make 10 minute videos so you guys aren't watching these super long 30 minute videos i would like to get you something every single day kind of see what you guys think about that so let's go ahead and we're going to time lapse um taking this uh cow off completely and i'll kind of show you guys exactly what you have to do to take it off all right guys so first things first you can go ahead and take the gasket off um, that presses against the bottom of the hood right here. So on the ends, you just want to pull towards yourself and it'll go over this little uh, peg right here that holds down the end. And then the rest of them are just clips that look like this. As you can see, that one kind of popped off. But you can pretty much just grab it and it'll they'll all just pull up like that. Um, and then just go all the way across. Make sure that you go ahead and pull all your clips out and just put them in the gasket so that way when you go back to put it on, you can just push down and clip it. Um, another thing I want to let you guys know is when you're taking apart a car like this or anything else, um, TJ Hunt does this when he rebuilt his Ferrari and all that, um, have some big Ziploc baggies and put all your clips and um, so like everything that goes to the cow right here. I'll put all the clips and bolts in one baggie so I know exactly where they go. So I'll probably roll up this gasket, put it in a baggie, label it um, gasket for cow or whatever. And then the bolts that go to the windshield wipers, um, I'll actually probably just screw those on the end of them. And, you know, like the clips that go around the edges, I'll probably put those in with the gasket in a Ziploc bag. So everything is organized and together. So when you go to put it all back together, everything can go back where it's supposed to be and you're not missing screws and bolts and stuff. All right, guys, so once you've got your gasket off, as you can see, I just kind of put it in the bag. Don't like roll it up really tight because you could like warp it and it won't lay flat once you put it back on the car, depending on how long it takes for your car to get painted and stuff. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to pop off those end caps for the windshield wipers. One thing that I'm actually going to do, um, I don't know if this is stupid, if there's a better way to line it up, um, but when I took off mine for my car, um, it took me forever to figure out exactly where these are supposed to go because there's so many notches on the actual windshield wiper itself. So I'm actually going to take some painter's tape and just kind of put it on the windshield here and here. So that way when we put them back on the car, we can line them up perfectly so they'll come to the same distance over here. Um, because I kind of had mine really high and then it was like coming almost right here onto the car. 
and then I went too low and they were only coming to right here and it was leaving like a bunch of water right here where I couldn't see good. So this is kind of just a way that you know exactly where they were lined up before and you can put them back there. Um, like I said, there might be an easier way to do this, but this is how I'm going to do it. All right, guys, so I got that done. That might be really stupid. I don't know. Um, but I just see that it might be an easier way to line them up. I made sure that they were pushed down to the, like, the lowest point because um, when I put them back on there, I'll do the same thing um, just because it was such a hassle of my car. Not the fact that it's hard. It's just kind of annoying because you got to um, take them off, move them around, put them back, bolt them down, and then turn your windshield wipers on and see where they're at. It's just kind of time consuming. So hopefully this will cut down on some of our time of having to deal with stupid stuff like that. Um, okay, so the next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and take these caps off the end. Um, you can kind of just pull them up with your hand. If they're kind of hard, uh, the ones on my car were hard, you can kind of take a screwdriver or something. Just be careful that you don't scratch the paint up. Or you can take those plastic pry tools that I've had that you've seen in multiple videos. You can get underneath the edge and kind of pry up on one side, pry up on the other side. Um, but anyway, so you can just pull them off like that. Get to the bolts right here. Um, this should be a 10 millimeter. Um, loosen them up and then you're actually going to pull this up and that's actually what unlocks it so you can slide it out all right guys so this is actually a 14 millimeter bolt and then another thing i was going to tell you guys is to line it up this is actually easier than having to tape that um, there's actually a notch out right here if you guys can see it on your windshield wiper and where the stud comes up right here if you mark it as you can see i did it right there with a sharpie as long as you line that up it'll be in the same spot um, when you put it back on because obviously if the stud is or this little notch is up here and it doesn't line up with your dot then it'll be too high or too low so that's another thing you can do besides taping it because obviously these can move around and it won't be lined up exactly the same so let's go ahead and we'll take them off all right guys so we got both of those off um, and again, you can label if you want to. Um, obviously, the longer one is on the driver's side, but you can make it idiot proof for yourself. So that way, when you're going back through, you can be like, boom, 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 put it back together quick, not have to second guess yourself or anything like that. Um, in my case, obviously, I have this video that I could look at, but, um, you know, that takes time to watch and stuff. So, you know, just label as much as you can. It'll make it easier on you. Another thing is, is if they're kind of stuck, these weren't that bad. Um, the ones on my car, they were, they were stuck on there really good. Um, once you open them up, and I'm going to leave them open, um, one thing I found out on my car is if you close them without there being anything underneath that they want to bend the opposite way. But anyway, um, just give them a little bit of encouragement with like a rubber mallet or um, you know something that's like rubber that won't hurt anything. Kind of put a towel over the end of it. Um, and kind of just hit down on it a little bit because sometimes they just get stuck in there where they've been on there so long and where they're tight um, and then that'll kind of help you loosen them up and then just wiggle back and forth until they uh, loosen themselves um, but obviously just make sure that you lift them up first before you try to take them off because when they're down they're like in a locked position and you can't pull them off so now let's go ahead and we will start taking the clips off um, mine had a bunch of plastic clips on it I don't know how this one is we'll check it out um, just some clips and then we'll probably just slide it down and that'll be pretty much it okay so the next step is to go ahead and take the two clips off on either edge um, you can just take a small uh, Phillips head or flathead and just push down on them right here and then you can actually if they're stuck you can use a flathead to pull them out but you can actually just take and just pull this up like this and see how it just pops loose so there's one clip right there um, make sure you push that little peg back in so it kind of locks it into place um, then the other ones on the other side in the same spot so right here push it down same thing pull it up and as you can see it popped out just make sure it don't go down in that abyss right there or you'll never see it again so now the next thing that you're going to want to do is go ahead and let me move the clip and stuff right here so now if you guys can see them there's actually plastic clips underneath here. There's one right here. There's another one right there. Um, I know it's kind of dark, but there's actually a piece of metal that comes off right here, and those clips go down into it, and that's what um, holds it into place in the center and stuff. 
So you're just gonna go to the edge over here and kind of just pull up nice and easy and you'll hear it pop like that. So that was a clip. And then you're just gonna work yourself across. I'm actually gonna do this with two hands so I can have even pressure um, along the cow at the same time so I don't break any of those clips. Okay guys, so you've seen kind of how I worked through it. Um, once you get it pulled up, you actually can't pull it out because the hood actually blocks it from coming out in one piece. So that's actually why they have put it into two pieces. And as you can see right here, there's a clip right here in the front, one right here, and then one right here in the back. And that's kind of what I was looking for. That's why it took me a little bit longer. So as you guys can see, if you really don't know how something comes apart, just kind of pull it out. And obviously if it's not gonna come through the hood, um, just look for a seam in your cowl, which I knew mine had that, and then just um, pop those clips out and it'll come out in two pieces. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, but now you guys can see um, the fender bolt right here. Let me go over here and show you guys. So the fender bolt right here, it'll be a lot easier to get to. Obviously we could have got to it anyway. We could have just pushed that gasket back um, and done it like that. And then the, actually the hinge bolts are not any easier to get to. I didn't know um, honestly exactly how it, the hinge went on there. Um, but as you can see, they're still kind of hard to get to. But once we take this fender off anyway, um, it'll be really easy for us to get to it because we have to take the fenders off um, for them to weld this piece in. So there you go. Um, obviously, if you're just changing the hood out or if your hood hinges are um, bent or anything like that, you don't really need to take your cowl off. No big deal. If you want to take your fenders off, it would make the job a little bit easier, um, but you can just push that gasket back. Um, the reason why I was taking it off is so we could see everything a little bit better and, you know, the fender's got to come off. I really didn't want to mess with that gasket too much. I want to um, not rip it or anything like that. And then I was actually hoping that it would help us with the hinges, but it's really not. Um, but anyway, so if you guys are wanting to put in like a, a strut bar in the front or anything like that, um, obviously you can take off the bolts right here, which are on that metal and pull it up. And then you'll be able to put in your strut bar or whatever you want to put up there. I know sometimes uh, there's like engine dampeners or whatever they're called um, that actually go off the struts in the TC1. Um, anything like that that you guys are wanting to do, you can do it like that. Um, but that's pretty much it for the cow. All right, guys, so that's pretty much going to be it for this video. I don't want to make you guys uh, watch like a 20 minute video because we're going to have daily uploads, like I said before. Um, but so next time we're actually going to go ahead and we'll probably just take this hood off because it's in the way. Um, you know, it's not serving a purpose right now. It's bent. The hinges are bent. We got to get all that stuff off. So I'll probably take off the fire blanket or whatever you guys want to call it. Um, we'll probably pop that off, keep all the clips and stuff, take out the windshield washers and then those clips and everything like that, save everything we can, um, and then pull the hood off, take the hinges off, all that stuff. So that'll be the next video. And then we'll actually start probably trying to take either the fenders off or we'll take off this um, front reinforcement right here. Um, either one, whichever one comes next. And then I'll show you guys how to um, unclip all this stuff here because um, as you can see, this is actually an airbag sensor right here. So you gotta be very careful taking those off. We'll actually make sure we unhook the battery for that um, because this whole brace right here is gonna be brand new that goes around the radiator. Um, so I'll show you guys how to take that off. We'll take the headlight out because um, we have two um, new headlights, well, new used, but um, they look really good. And that's pretty much it. And then we'll see how the paint and stuff goes. Obviously, we got to get some two, three more parts in, and then we'll have everything here. And hopefully, we can have this car on the road next week, and we'll be doing some driving tests, stuff like that. Um, the paddle shifters are great. I actually drove it down the road and they're really responsive. I'm jealous that my car actually don't have it. Um, and I believe this is actually the only TC that ever had the paddle shifters on it. Um, so that's really cool. Um, another cool thing that I was going to show you guys is if you're doing your brake fluid, um, this little door right here actually pops up for you to be able to get to it so you don't have to take your cowl for that. I was actually wondering, I was like, how are you, can people fill up their brake fluid? Um, container and stuff, but that's a cool design by Scion and Toyota whoever did that um, But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you're going to enjoy the daily uploads this week
Um, but till next time, guys, peace out. And remember, build your masterpiece.